Tonight, is the Supreme Court about to let hundreds of insurrectionists off the hook? Well, the justices heard oral arguments today in Fisher versus United States. Fisher is this man, Joseph Fisher. He's a former Pennsylvania police officer who was indicted for storming the Capitol. His lawyers argue that he wasn't really part of the mob, that he just got squeezed in by the crowd. He's also charged with trying to obstruct an official proceeding to stop Congress from doing its job and certifying the 2020 election. Now, that is the piece that the ju justices will ultimately decide, whether or not the Justice Department can actually charge him with obstruction. They're doing it under a 2002 law that was meant to corral white-collar criminals. It was originally designed to stop the smartest criminals in the room at Enron and other companies like it from destroying evidence. Now, of the nearly 1,400 people who were arrested for participating in the insurrection, 350 are facing obstruction charges, including Donald Trump. So today, Fisher's attorney argued that the law is ridiculously limited, that unless you're talking about documents or records, unless you are tampering with evidence, it really doesn't apply. And so you can't charge obstruction, no matter what proceeding you may be impeding. Liberal Justice Sonia Sotomayor did the Supreme Court equivalent of laughing at that idea, asking this. There is a, a sign on the theater. You will be kicked out of the theater if you photograph or record the actors, or otherwise disrupt the performance. If you start yelling, I think no one would question that you can be expected to be kicked out under this policy, even though yelling has nothing to do with photograph or recording. Now, the conservatives didn't go hook, line, and sinker for Fisher's arguments, but their questions of the government suggest that insurrectionists are going to get a pass, or at least dramatically reduced criminal exposure. Questions like these from Neil Gorsuch, a Trump pick to the bench, about what else might fall under the law. Would a sit-in that disrupts a trial or access to a federal courthouse qualify? Would a heckler in today's audience qualify or at the State of the Union address? Would pulling a fire alarm uh, uh, before a vote qualify for 20 years in federal prison? Sit-ins, hecklers, fire alarms, they might be an impediment, but it is not an insurrection. For everyone that forgets, this is what the mob looked like. It's hard to see how anyone can argue that the intent here was not to obstruct a constitutionally important official proceeding. But the court's conservatives seem ready to do just that. Protesters blocked the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and disrupted traffic in San Francisco. What if something similar to that happened all around the Capitol so that members, all the bridges from Virginia were blocked and members from Virginia who needed to appear at a hearing couldn't get there or were delayed in getting there. What if on January 6th, the Capitol itself had not been breached? There have been many violent protests that have interfered with uh, uh, proceedings. Has the government uh, uh, applied this provision to other protests in the past? There are six other counts in the indictment here, and why aren't those six counts good enough just uh, from the Justice Department's perspective. So who is the court poised to help here? Well, someone like Pauline Bauer. For more, I want to bring in veteran journalist Carl Bernstein. He's also the author of Chasing History, a kid in the newsroom. Carl, uh, what's your takeaway from what happened at the Supreme Court today? Yet another hugely important case before them. I wouldn't overestimate the importance of this case. Uh, it affects perhaps several hundred of those who were arrested. Uh, I think we need to look at January 6 as a moment in our history in which an incumbent president of the United States attempted to undermine our very democracy and to encourage this insurrection and to encourage and impede the free election of the president of the United States and the president of the United States duly elected 
taking office. That's what all of these cases, and even the case in New York, is about a criminal president, and, Donald Trump, before he's president, trying to undermine the electoral system. And the court that's, basically is saying... That's what we're... Just on wanna, the official proceeding part, they're saying that this may not even count as a criminal charge. Yeah, this, this is one part of charges against uh, a great number of rioters. We don't know how many will be affected by it if the conservative majority uh, indicated today and th their indications hold up that they'll, they'll decide in favor of dismissing some of these charges. Uh, I, I would put this in, in the heading of a big, a big footnote. Uh, I don't think that it's the big news of the day. I think that what we need to keep our eye on is Donald Trump is a criminal president of the United States. Those charges against him on January 6th, and incidentally, it's, there's very little indication that what the justices were saying today would have any effect on the charges against Donald Trump. You're absolutely right that some of these charges against the rioters could be uh, dismissed as a result of this. But I, I don't think it's it's the big story, and I don't think that that we need to overestimate uh, what may be a decision that will circumscribe the punishment and the charges about some of those defendants. One of the things that we just a mom moments ago got the official transcript from the Manhattan uh, hearing today that we were just discussing earlier in the show. And so now we have a little bit more of a window of what the judge actually said. Here's a quote from Judge Merchan. He's talking about Trump's demeanor in the courthouse. He says, so Mr. Blanche, while the juror was at the podium, maybe 12 feet from your client, your client was audibly uttering something. I don't know what exactly he was uttering. He was audibly gesturing, speaking in the direction of the juror. I won't tolerate that. I will not have any jurors intimidated in this court, courtroom. I want to make that crystal clear. The, the judge there really reprimanding Trump and, and his attorneys pretty strongly for his behavior in the courthouse. What do you make of what Trump might be trying to do by how he is kind of treating these proceedings, maybe trying to delegitimize them in a certain way? No, I think, you know, it's intended for his audience. Again, I wouldn't attach too much uh, importance to it. Uh, what I would say is that this judge intends to run uh, a very uh, strict courtroom. And he's not going to treat Trump differently than any other defendant. Uh, and if there's going to be these kinds of theatrics, he's going to put a stop to them. Uh, again, I think we need to keep our eye on a president of the United States, such as George Washington warned us about when he said that there will be cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men who will be enabled to subvert the power of the people and to usurp for themselves the reins of government. That is what all of these cases in one way or another go to. This thing about falsifying records in the New York case is about why did he falsify the records? Because he did not want the voters to know the facts and he obstructed justice as it were to keep the voters from having a record of what had actually occurred. So all of these alleged crimes by Donald Trump, a seditious, the first seditious president of the United States, which is really what January 6th is about. And, and what Donald Trump and the Republican Party don't want us to, to know and don't want us to focus on is what occurred on January 6th, an attempt by a president of the United States to stage a coup. Here, earlier, before the election, an attempt by a candidate for the presidency to undermine the very election system. It's all consistent. It all fits together. It, it, as with so many things that Trump does, this was perhaps the opening salvo as he was running for president the first time. But it continued on in the years that followed, and in that's much why more egregious that, ways. And that's why he's facing not not just one, but several uh, criminal criminal trials that could go on this year and in the following year. Carl Bernstein, always great to have you Good on the show. Thank you very much.